Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and you're watching Conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. In this lesson we're going to talk about predictive site survey tools. And as the name suggests, this actually predicts the results of the site survey. In other words, it'll tell you where to put the access points. It'll tell you where the coverage holes are and it'll also show you the impact of using different antennas. Now, as we go through this, remember that this does not replace actually going out to the site and doing a survey. And as we go through this lesson, you'll see why this is a valuable tool, but you cannot rely on this tool exclusively to actually tell you what access points you want to deploy and where. So before we can start talking about what the predictive planning tools are, we need to understand some fundamental concepts. So we're going to start with talking about how signals propagate over the air. So what happens to my signal when it leaves the transmitting antenna and arrives at the receiving antenna? Once we've done that, we're going to talk about a link budget. A link budget is all about how do I make sure I receive enough signal strength in my antenna that my receiver can successfully decode that signal and get back to your ones and zeros. So we're going to talk about that link budget. Once we understand those concepts, we can then start looking at the predictive models. We're going to start with the line of sight model. The line of sight model is perhaps the easiest one to understand. Where that model would be relevant is if you were deploying perhaps bridge links and you can physically see the link between two buildings. So you can see from one receiver to the transmitter. Most wireless LANs, however, are deployed in a non-line of sight environment, i.e. you're transmitting and able to receive the signal, but you can't actually see the access point. Once we understand those models, then we can go on and talk about the predictive planning tools that I've got available that I could use. So let's start thinking about signal propagation and talk about what happens to my signal when it goes over the air. Well, in this illustration, you can see my access point there in the middle and it's radiating out and those waves are hitting various objects and in this case it's buildings but it could equally be something like a bus or a car, a filing cabinet, your body, a wall and so what happens to those signals when it reaches those obstacles and what happens is largely dependent on the actual frequency that you're operating at and so let's step through these the diffraction, this is where the wave literally bends, so it hits the corner of a building and then appears to bend around that building. And in fact, you can see this effect if, for instance, if you're having a bath and you stick your finger in the bath water at an angle, even though you know your finger is straight, your finger appears to bend. It's the same effect that you get with the waves when they hit the corner of this building is that it will literally appear to bend around it. The other aspect is reflection and thank goodness we have reflection because if we didn't have reflection then we wouldn't be able to have non-line of sight communications. And so what's happening here is my signal will reach a building and it will reflect off that building or reflect off that surface and some obstacles are more reflective than others. So something like mirrors, for instance, give me a very strong reflected signal. Other surfaces tend to absorb more of the signal and I have much more of a weaker reflected signal. So any signals that are transmitting on frequencies below 6 gigahertz will tend to reflect. And of course, we're operating on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, and so we're able to get those reflected signals. Anything up in the higher frequency band tends to scatter more than to reflect. And what do I mean by scattering? 
Well, to understand scattering, remember when you go up into the very high frequencies, your wavelength is getting very, very small. So what's happening is that your wavelength is starting to approach the same size as the roughness of your surface. So all surfaces are rough. And if the wavelength is close to the roughness of that surface, then the signal will actually scatter as opposed to giving you a strong reflected signal. So here you can see an example where my signals are bouncing off the desk, the filing cabinets, etc., and then arriving there at the laptop. And so this is your typical wireless LAN environment. And this is what we refer to as multipath, where my signals are bouncing off these reflected surfaces and then arriving from different paths at my receiver. And again, you will still lose some signal with absorption, but most of it gets reflected rather than absorbed. But of course, we still need to worry about absorption because if, for instance, my access point is on one side of the wall and I'm on the other side of the wall wanting to send my data, then we need to worry about how much signal strength is lost as it goes through that solid object. And of course, depending on what that obstacle is, my signal will be absorbed more or less. So say, for instance, I'm going through a really thick concrete outside wall, I'm going to get a lot more attenuation of my signal than if I'm just going through maybe a dry wall, a very thin plaster type wall, then my signal's not going to be absorbed as much and I'm going to get a stronger signal on the other side. So when we talk about planning models, a lot of them you actually go in and you'll put walls and cubicles etc and they'll take that into account when they actually plan out how much coverage I have and how far my signal will go. So now we've talked about what happens to your signal over the air, let's talk about the link budget. And of course, we're going to talk about a link budget. We have to talk about decibels. Now, decibels can be incredibly confusing to people. So let me spend a little bit of time helping you understand what a decibel is. In fact, I put the equation here for you as well. So a decibel is literally a representation of the difference between two power levels. So say, for instance, at home, you may have on your music system an amplifier and so power comes in and then the signal is amplified and more power leaves and so you've got a ratio between the power coming in and the power going out and that ratio is represented in decibels. Now the decibel is actually the log representation and let me give you a, an illustration as to why we demonstrate it in a log form. Now let's say, for instance, you transmit at your access point, transmitting at, let's say, 100 milliwatts. The time that signal gets to the receiver on your laptop or your IP phone, it's actually going to receive something like about yeah, 10 to the minus 10 milliwatts. And so the difference between transmitting at 100 milliwatts and receiving at something like 10 to the minus 10 milliwatts, that's a tremendous ratio difference. And so to represent those large numbers, we take the log of the differences in power. And that's simply all that a decibel is. And people get confused when you see things like dBm and dBi and the fact that I can add them together. But bear in mind, it's not like adding meters and feet. You're not dealing with units here. You're dealing with ratios. And of course, I can combine ratios together. The other thing that people kind of get confused about is, is because it's a ratio and I'm taking a log of a ratio, if the ratio is actually below 1, so P1 is actually smaller than P2, so that ratio is actually below 1, what happens is the log of a number below 1 is actually a minus.
And so you can see, for instance, in this table, that if I take the log of 0.5, what I actually end up with here is minus 3 dB. And people get very confused about that. But it's again, all I'm doing is taking a ratio, and it's a ratio less than 1. So most RF engineers are very comfortable with the dBs, etc. But many people in an IT environment don't work with decibels all the time, and it can be quite confusing. And so I put this reference chart in here for you. And there's a few things that you should always remember. Like, for instance, if I say to you that I've got a 3 dB gain, what they're saying is that is twice the power. A 10 dB gain, 10 times.